don't know how much it'll be kind of like a go through this thing and at the end it's like wow whoa cool thing but I, I try to do that uh, there's one really cool application but it really only means something if you have a physics background but I can still explain it but I'm gonna start with this question and engage for all you 5D model enthusiasts out there um, <laughs> yeah George is like, but well, I just talked. I don't need no 5D model or anything like that. Right? What's the question? Oh, 5D model is like this five thing we do. In it's percentage, like, it's the five, me. the five E's of a lesson plan. Yeah, they give, you, oh. they give you a way to, like, format, you know, how to. Okay, and you speak. And, <laughs> is that, what, what does that mean? Ed, ed, education school. School. Oh, I do speak, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I didn't think of the lingo there. Okay. So here's something we all are familiar with, I think. It's the set R2. So it's just the set of all pairs of real numbers you can think of. So pick a real number, pick another real number, you get an element in this set, okay? So this is a set. Then there's kind of something we also call R2, but there's a technical difference. So this is 2D Euclidean space. What's the difference between these two things right here? Why do we get to call this a space? Because it has a mechanism to measure difference, or like distance. Okay. okay. So there's a concept of distance that comes along with space. And now, to be precise, this is a certain kind of space called a metric space. So there's, a, you know, you can, you, there's all different kinds of spaces, but in essence, a space is a set endowed with some kind of extra structure. So you just you don't get to call any set a space. You need some other kind of thing to make it a space. And you can kind of get the idea, you know, like one, two, three, four. That's just a set. That's a collection of numbers, right? And I could write it. I could also write it like this. It's the same set. You know, I can write it like this. I could. You know, but this isn't a number line yet. You know, it, it isn't this. One, two, three, four. I, you know, I try. I make the intervals equal. You know, and there's. I can't just mix these around. You know, I can't draw them however far apart I want. It's not a number line anymore. There's no sense of distance between the elements of the set. So, in some sense, you're kind of adding a structure, like rigidifying a set in some way. Okay. So let's explore that idea. Uh, how do we define distance in good old two-dimensional Euclidean space? Someone that's not great with maybe as like the point between two like finite things or something. Okay, so you pick two points. Okay, so maybe we'll call this point. Um, I'm not going to do like x1, y1, x2, y2. I'm looking ahead to make the notation make more sense. So I'm going to call this point u that has an x component. Point u, ux, uy. Point v, vx, vy. Okay, so now what's the distance between points u and v? Do you want the formula or do you just. Yeah, yeah, let's do the formula. So maybe we'll denote it like that. Let's, let's do distance squared so I don't have an ugly square root in there. What's the distance squared between these two points? The difference in x sub okay. x squared, the difference of the sub y squared. Okay, so what, so what do I write? What's the distance, oh, difference in this? U, uv minus, or, or ux minus vx. Okay. And, that, and then square that plus, and then likewise with subscript y. Okay, so does everyone agree that this gives you the distance between these two points? Okay, so what we've done here is we've kind of, we've imposed a relation on points <coughs> in the space, okay? So, so that's usually what adding a structure entails, adding a structure to a set entails 
is imposing some kind of relation. Some way these two elements should be related. Okay. I'm going to rewrite this in sort of a more enlightening way here. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is think about these two points as being given by position vectors, okay? So if I'm talking about these two things being given by vectors, then in vector language, how would I find that distance? First off, what's the what are the components of this difference vector? It's one vector minus the other. Yeah. So, in component form, it would be what would be the first component? Difference of the sub x's. What would be the next component? Same with y. Same with y. Okay. With, with u and v in the same order. Okay. Now. Is there a vector operation that takes this vector to this expression right here? Dot is, isn't it dot itself? Dot itself? Okay, so if I dot this with itself. I get this times this, which is that. Isn't that the norm squared? This times this is that, yeah. Okay. So it's the norm squared of this difference vector, if you want, like that, right? So if the point I'm getting at is that the dot product is a way to define distance among a set of vectors, right? So any, any vector, if I just wanted to figure out the length of one vector, what is it? What are the length squared? What's the length squared? Dot it with itself. Yeah, u dot u. So the idea of a Hilbert space is that you uh, define, you make it complete. Like this? From, with respect to the metric. Well, yeah, so that's, that would be a kind of dot product for the infinite dimensional space of, of functions. Yeah. So, but you, if you have a dot product, and that defines a norm, mm -hmm. and then if you're complete, if, if it's a complete space with that norm, meaning that uh, it's closed under limits, then it's called the Hilbert space. Okay, and, and this is where I'm not going to be totally precise and get lost on some of the details, but you know, yeah, feel free to fill me in. Uh, but the point being that, uh, a dot product, or the generalization you usually call an inner product, defines a concept of length squared. Okay? You can also, now here's maybe a direct application of, I'm going to expand this thing out. ux squared plus vx squared plus uy squared plus vy squared minus 2 times ux, vx, plus dy. Okay, agree with that? Okay. Now what's, how do I write this in terms of dot products? So these would make u dot u, right? Yes. And then what's this? Um, so can you read that out? It's, it's I can't see it. So this is ux vx plus ui vy. It's just u dot v, right? Yeah. Okay. Does anyone remember how to define? So that's that's that would be the same as u minus v dotted with itself. Yeah, and 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 but but I'm trying to show like a familiar identity here. So what would be cosine theta in terms of, of dot products? You don't remember? It's the uh, 
the dot product of the two vectors divided by the product of the magnet fields. Okay. I'm solving this end. And what's this? Law of cosines. Oh, okay. so the law of cosines directly follows from the distance formula. These are two very important things that are taught in high school. So I mean, you know, this isn't that. I feel like this would be a useful thing uh, to present to a, you know. I was never showed it, that this connection. I was just like, boom, that's the law of cosines, and I don't know where it came from. But this, uh, anyway, the point point is that. There's also a connection between dot products and angles, right? So you can talk about length squared being defined in terms of dot product. You can also talk about an angle definition. So the angle between any two vectors is also given in terms of the dot product. OK, so my point is that the dot product or the inner product is an important generalization of what we consider to be distance in sets. OK, so usually when you're trying to define a, a sense of distance on a set, you're, you're imposing an inner product or a dot product. So, so it, am I right in saying this could be completely wrong? Uh, inner product space has to have some sort of metric. Um, is that, is that the, well, the inner product will give you a metric, but but there are you can have a a vector space with a metric that doesn't come from a dot product, and, and that would be called a Banach space. OK. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, and there, there's, yeah, there's technicalities here. But I, I, I want to make the point that the dot product between two vectors is a more fundamental idea than like a distance formula or something like that. That, that, that distance formula, you know, you probably all memorize and stuff. You, you're able to recite. Is, is really just, it, it, it's expressed in terms of a dot product. So I want to uh, explore the idea of a dot product and think about what a dot product really is. So it's some function, it's some function of two, two vectors, right? <laughs> well, before we get into a function of, and, and, and it's linear. Uh, most importantly, it's bilinear, which means it's linear in each of both its arguments. So let's talk about first what we just mean by a linear function of one vector. How do we write that? You mean the, the assertion that it's linear? Yeah. Well, then you'd say f of au plus bb. So f of a linear combination is equal to the linear combination of Right, and then you could. So, so this is the linear requirement, but I mean, how do we usually? And I think there's yeah. So I, I would I would erase the what's on the left of the equal right. sign here, and, and just say that the F top of line A. equals the bottom line, like this. Yeah. So that that thing on the top. Oh, I see. You, you, you just, did it in two steps. Well, yeah, we're, we're going to set that aside. But yeah, so this is just a linear function of one vector. But I mean, how do you how do you write a linear function of a vector? I mean, what's another way? We don't, you know, we don't usually think about it as f of v, but it's like something multiplied by v. Oh well. Yeah, so any any linear function of a vector is just another vector the dotted with it. Mm -hmm. And so, but I mean, there's another, it, it's, it's a matrix times a vector, right? Um, well, a matrix times a vector will be another vector. And, and then, yeah, that would be linear. Uh, but if you if you wanted a scalar output, but I, I yeah, so I was assuming you wanted a scalar. Oh yeah, so I, yeah. I, I should have I should have uh, specified that. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, yeah. 
uh, a vector. So this is a vector, this is also a vector. So that sort of idea. It's a, a linear transformation of a vector, right? So a linear transformation of one vector is just a matrix acting on a vector. So what we want to do now is define some notion of a linear, a linear transformation of two vectors. A matrix acting on two vectors. How might, how might we... And this is going to be... Um, so this is maybe not quite what... Because this is going to be another vector output. I didn't really think about that. So, so, you, do you so this is going to have a scalar output. So, so how about you transpose A, B? Yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. Yeah. So this is what's called a bilinear form. Or, you know, it's just a way to write a linear function of two vectors, right? So if I want this to be the dot product, What's the matrix A going to be? B identity. Uh-huh. Because you just have UX, UY, identity. DX, BY, right? OK. Uh, so yeah, the, this is the way that we're going to generally write the dot product as a bilinear form that eats two vectors by sandwiching its transpose over here. Sandwiching one of its transposes. So, you want to, there, there's a few important properties that define an inner product. So it has to be non-degenerate, which means that if the whole, if the whole thing is zero, then one of the vectors has to be zero. Okay, what about, does that imply, I'm sorry, does that imply sure. linear, linear independence? Uh, yeah, it has something to do with linear independence. Okay. Do you know exactly what the connection is there well, between because, this? Because if their dot product is zero, doesn't that mean they're... The dot product is zero, then they're orthogonal, right? So then they're yeah. linear independent. Linearly independent. Something like that. I, that feel, I feel, okay, I just feel like that has some connection to independence. No, it, it, definitely, it definitely does. So if, if, the, if, this is, if their dot product or inner product is zero, that means they're orthogonal, means they're linearly independent. Oh, so, I see. Okay. I see. okay. I get, I understand what you meant when you wrote that. So, I mean, uh, maybe this isn't necessarily true because, well, yeah, I mean, that's right, right? Um, so, so, uh, it might be, no. the implication might be the other way around, right? Does it, does it go this way? Yeah, if, if I take, if either one of them is zero, then the dot product is zero. Yeah. I think because the dot product could be zero, but they could also just be worth Yeah, they're not necessarily zero. Yeah, that, that's right. So, uh, yeah, okay, I think this is not degeneracy. Anyway, that's but how is here's a more important idea what how is g of u v related to g of v u okay if if that matrix is symmetric they're equal and if it's skew symmetric they're opposite right so that's where i'm headed so symmetric the inner product is symmetric 
that's com it's sometimes called a symmetric product. So any dot product we want to define is going to have this relation. Switch, and, and that makes sense, right? Because if you if you switch you know, if you switch the roles of U and V, they still there's it's still the same angle between them, right? And if you're just dotting U with itself, you know, switching them doesn't do anything, right? It's still the same length squared. Okay, so maybe one more thing that we could deduce is G of U U. It's what's G of U U? It's a norm squared. Yeah. Importantly, not zero. Unless, unless you maybe that. that's the non-degeneracy that you that, that that could be yeah I uh, yeah I think I, I got ambitious gluing the non-degeneracy thing on there when I didn't know very much about it but in any case I think that I, I'm going to focus on this the symmetry condition and this this idea that the two uh, vectors as inputs does, gives a non-zero thing so unless unless of course it's a zero vector. The thing is, you can have different notions of distance. So I mean, this is just for R2, right? This is Euclidean space. Um, let's try and think about what happens when we go to like a, a manifold, OK? And so what happens is that you have a tangent space at a point. And then the metric, so call this point P, the metric will be at some function of whatever the parameters are that define the manifold. So for instance, it'll be a function of the point, right? So you'll have a different matrix here at every point, but it's defining an inner product on the tangent space at that point. Is that is that matrix you're talking about the uh, uh, it's partial with respect to x and y for this example? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, so let's and, and 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 yeah, there's some way to get it by taking partial derivatives. The way I think about it is like, what's the line element? So this this just hold, this 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 won't. We'll still have a symmetric product such that g of u u gives the you know the the, the length of the vector. But it'll be a different symmetric matrix for you know on a manifold. So the what so like what's the line element on a sphere? The great circle. Great circle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So how would I so like so like a differential distance ds squared is given by what expression? Like if I were to integrate. So if I were to then like sort of set the square root of something as ds, and then I integrate to get like an arc length on a on a on a sphere. So you you got a that subscript p. So if if you're going to go from one point to another, you have to have that point p continuously changing, and so your that matrix is continuously changing, but but you'll have, you can like do a Riemann sum of infinitesimal-ish steps going from one point to the other. And so let's see, how, so how do you, if, if, how do you get the vector from the point P that directs you to the other point Q? So, so yeah, late, so you have that one point there with the square around labeled P, so call yeah, that other one Q. Uh, well, well, I care about this. Well, here, here's the way. Okay. Yeah, so you, you want to talk about the distance from P to Q, right, o along, in, along the manifold. Yeah, um, the, so, so let's, so like if I zoom in, if I zoom into here, then like, We're talking about like the length of a 
of a, of a tiny tangent vector in the tangent plane, which is going to be like the differential line element along along the sphere, right? Okay, so you're you're not talking about any macroscopic distance. No, no, no. That yeah, I mean, like if it's the connection or something. I don't, I don't really. I mean, that's that's like yeah. I, but but the way I'm just thinking about it is like if you if I so like the the fact that it's a manifold means it's locally Euclidean. So I can zoom in really close to the tangent space, and that's light distance on a differential level on the foot surface of the sphere. And so if I call like this little vector d theta, right, little, little step in the theta direction, little step in the b direction. In terms of those, what's the line element? I'm probably, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing the, this. So the square, it would be the sum of the squares. So it would be this? Yeah, it, unless you want to do some matrix stuff before that. Well, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this in matrix form eventually. So, so, but there's there's a fa there's a factor right here. Oh. There, so it's. It is cosine squared. Theta. You and you can get this by taking like the. So it's like you have a parameterization of, you know, x or, yeah, you can you can embed it in space and then get a parameterization which is like the usual spherical coordinates and then you take partial derivatives of that. You end up with, you end up with like one so, like d. Is it yeah? It's just. Is it the second derivative or? Uh, for the for the. Are you talking about the matrix, the two by two matrix we have? Yeah. It'd be the first. Is it like this? So are the are the theta and the phi are those supposed to be like the uh, latitude and longitude on on that whole sphere there? Yeah, yeah. It's like an infinitesimal. So you can treat it as linear, like an infinitesimal step. Okay. Along well, if, if 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 theta is the latitude, then that would be cosine instead of sine. Isn't it? Because when you get close to the North Pole, a, a little change in longitude moves a very short distance. Also, Kale, it could be cosine. I don't know. Um, everything that, I, that I've done has been under Arplan parametrization, and this isn't necessarily Arplan parametrization. So a lot of the formulas I use um, might not necessarily be the ones you have to use in the more general case. So I'm not sure what the matrix would be in this case. So is this the thing you're talking about? Well, usually when we do it, it's, it you just take the first, um, make sure they're not, obviously they're linearly independent. Oh, I know what it is, yeah. So dr, dx, 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 So then this is a vector, and, and then dr. Etc. Yeah, let me let me get out my notes, but okay. I don't want to distract from where you're going. Like well, um, anyway, uh, so but but the point is that so 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 what's this matrix here? Then so if I have like. You said it was cosine, and so then what would the matrix be? So, let's see. First step one, one, zero, one, zero, zero cosine? Yeah. Square. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the manifold's more complicated. We don't necessarily have to go that far in that direction. But my, my point is that you can just, you can have a different idea of an inner product based on what, I mean, th you, you get a different matrix in the middle that's still symmetric and has all those properties of the, you know, good old identity matrix for the Euclidean case. But it's just, it's, you know, it's going to be some function of, sorry, so yeah, some function of 
one of your parameters are that, that define the manifold or but okay. Um, Notice though that we're talking about distance squared. So does that maybe uh, motivate some other kind of way we can define structure on a space? Like 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 we didn't necessarily have to use the distance squared. Uh, it turns out. So let's go back to R two, where things are more. Intuitive. Two vectors in U and V, two vectors U and V and R2. What you could do is talk about, instead you could talk about, oh, that's awful. You could talk about the area enclosed by the vectors, right? And so, I mean, what if you ask the question, instead of, instead of defining my uh, structure or whatever in terms of distance squared, I can talk about the area, right? So, and there was a there was a great little visual you had in your presentation that that showed showed how to get that. So, uh, ux, uy, vx, vy. So, given the components of these two vectors, what's the area enclosed by them? So it's the magnitude of the cross product. Uh -huh. So, okay, so I could try it like that. Um, UX, UI, cross product only defined in three dimensions, so we add on a zero. Right, so this is one way to get it. So then what would that give? Yeah, so that you get the, the determinant of the lower left corner there. UX, UI minus uy vx, right? Yeah. This is the area enclosed by u and v. Okay, and it would be the same as that g of u, v if you put the right matrix in the middle. Aha, uh -huh. so what is that matrix? I, don't say it. I, see, no. if you guys, okay, I'll, see if you guys can figure it can out. You okay. restate, can you restate the question? Yeah, I'll write it, I'll write the question. I'm gonna define a new bilinear form, a new matrix that eats two vectors. It's gonna look like ux, uy, dot, 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 vx, vy, and this is supposed to give the area between them, i.e. this expression, find the dot, 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 dot. See if you can do it. Do, do, do. <laughs> it's... Is this gonna be a linearly independent matrix? What do you mean by that? So like, with, will this It'll be an in, invertible matrix. It will be, okay. And it'll be non-degenerate, what, whatever that means. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I checked out nilpotent. We were talking about nilpotent the other day, and uh, it means that some power of the thing is equal to zero. Yeah, like in modular regression that I was talking about? Yeah. So eventually repeating the yeah. Yeah. transformational So, so in zero. the case of a matrix, if if it's invertible, if it's if it's not invertible, it'll be nil it could be nil potent. Okay. I got no detail. <laughs> how how can we mix how can we mix these variables up to get this expression? Oh, so basically the result would be Yeah, the oh, result okay. the result would be this. Because that's like Is it one, zero, zero, negative one? This is our first guess, okay? What happens if I hit this with one, zero, zero, minus one? Negative, oh, uh, oh boy, I'm rusty on this. So just move, so first just multiply this matrix by this vector. Yeah, you, row times column. Yeah, this row, this row times this column, what do we so get? So that's V sub X. Uh -huh. This row times this column. And you have negative, Okay, now this guy's right here. Okay, what do I get? 
uh, a sub x, u sub y. My turn? Oh, wait, that's okay. where I'll I can't, I can't see. Yeah, sorry, I, I, you want to rewrite it bigger over here? Yeah, I'm sorry. You're good. I, I ended up. Yeah, my vision's kind of lousy too. All right, okay. This is what, okay, this is Wrigley's guess. U, X, V, Y times V, X minus V, Y, which is U, X, V, X minus V, I, I wrote something oh, wrong U, X, V, X <laughs> minus Sorry, this is U, X, U, Y. Yeah. Right? Okay, so yeah. Okay. Ux, Vy, Vx. So Ux, Vx minus Uy, Vy. Is that what we want? No. So how would we alter your guess? Ooh. <clears throat> would we... We want to get you the... the I think the clip, right? Yeah, flip the, the, the columns. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? So you're saying put this column here and that column there? Yeah. So our matrix is this. Let's try. And that is what is called skew symmetric. So, so what happens when we hit this matrix with this vector? So this guy's gonna stay. Okay. What? What happens when this matrix is Vy. Wait. Yeah, Vy is the B -Y. first vector. Vy. Okay. And then Which gives? Which gives us exactly B -Y. what we want. Minus. Yeah, exactly. Minus. Yeah. Ta da. So. Let's summarize what we found out. <clears throat> One option for defining structure on a set is G of U V. And at least in R2, let's just stick to R2 and stay simple. So I don't get into things I don't know about. G of U V is U transpose A V. Omega U of V, U transpose, uh, I don't know, let's call it big omega. I don't know how to write big omega. U transpose V. Okay, so where A here is the identity. Okay, but what's what's the big matrix in the middle that we found? Uh, I don't know what to call it. Is that like a name? Well, yeah, eventually, but, but what, what were the entries? Oh, uh, zero, negative one, first column, or sorry, and yeah, one, zero. Okay, so let's figure out what, we said that <clears throat> this holds, what's, how are these guys related? What happens when I switch the entries? See if you can figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is that? Yeah, yeah. Well, when I switch, so this. It's like what I did wrong the first. Or... I don't think it's quite what you did. Okay. It's instead if I did this. Wouldn't the negative just be put in the first? Like you kind of flip. Like that quantity. Wouldn't it just be negative? V sub x, v sub y plus. U sub y, v sub x, I could be not wrong. Like not that? Right. Yeah. So the minus sign gets tacked on, and so we actually end up getting u, y, v, x, minus u, x, v, y. That's so then how are these related? They're just inverses. Yeah. Additive inverses? Yeah. OK. So this is what we call symmetric. As George said, this is what we call skew symmetric. Sometimes it's called anti-symmetric, um, although I think anti-symmetric might have so what happens to G of U, U? Yeah, so let's do that. 
So g of u u is, no, is, is interpreted as norm u squared. What happens to omega u u? That's an interesting point. So what if these were both? So what if this, these were both? Or, 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 if we're doing u u. Well, then wouldn't it be? Uh, Could it be dx? Wouldn't it be uh, d squared x minus? I probably shouldn't jump the gun. Let's try and do it. So, okay. what what do I get when I multiply this matrix by that vector? So, so the big, yeah, B sub Y. Right, and we'll, uh, we'll use U's, because now we're, these are both U. Okay. So, yeah, so no V's, just U. Yeah, just, yeah, I'm gonna go do U. Okay, so, so that, so there's a minus, um, wait, isn't the first one? Yeah, shouldn't they be flipped? I think the sign's flipped on the second one. So it depends on which way you did your associate, association. Uh, So it's just the, it's the ux, uy, minus uy, ux plus that, zero. Okay, and you could have, you could have actually deduced that from here, because if I plug in u here, it has to be the minus of itself. Which is only true in zero fashion. So now, those, those last two equations, are true of cross product. You you re, you reverse the vectors, you get the opposite cross product. So let's talk. Cross with yourself, you get zero. Correct. So let's talk about that. So this is this guy is associated to u dot u, and as you said, what vector operation is this guy associated to? U, u cross v. Yeah. Or yeah, magnitude u cross v. Okay. This is a notion of Ramanian geometry. A Ramanian metric is like an inner product on, now obviously you apply to manifolds, <coughs> and then you're talking about acting on the tangent space. What do you think this one's called? You mean like somebody's name? <laughs> Actually, no, it's not. It's a, it's a weird word. I, I think it's the name of my presentation. Um, yeah, so this is, Symplectic uh, geometry. So, two ways of defining structure on the set. This one talks about distance squared. All right, that distance squared. This one talks about area. Okay. Now. Here's a weird sort of fact. Uh, symplectic geometry is only well defined for even dimensions. Because um, what happens is once you've got once you start getting into higher dimensions, let's say now we're in R4. This is all uh, yeah, for, for, for Rn, it's just so even dimensional R, R2n, is this block matrix where you get, where it's like this skew symmetry right here, zeros along the diagonal. This, you can think of this zeros along the diagonal being sort of what makes it zero for thing, you know, things with itself. And then the skew symmetry gets this, gives you this minus sign here. But it's always the n by n identity matrix, and then right here, and then the minus n by n identity matrix for R two n. Okay. Now you might think, what is the point of defining, you know, geometric structure that only works on even dimensions? Um, there is a natural way that historically that this uh, came up, um, and I'll talk about it here in a second. But first, what I want to do is, is there anything else I want to do? What? Yeah, let's just go after this. So, 
I'm gonna maybe seem like I'm going in a different direction, but it's gonna tie in. And that's what I think is cool about math, is you can go in a different direction and then find something that you didn't even expect. And it will also tell us why they call it symplectic geometry. I looked up the terminology and it's not simplicity, so it's not simplicial, it's, which can be confusing, but it actually comes from its relation to the complex numbers. So in the complex plane, and uh, let's say I have, well, let's just use the same variable. So I have a complex number u and I have a complex number v. What is, or you know what? It's not even do that one yet. What's the, what's the length squared of the complex number? What's its magnitude? Uh, you multiply by the complex conjugate to get the magnitude squared. U, U bar, right? Now, what you can do is extend the idea of C, just like we do R, to C2. So then what you're looking at is a complex vector. So you can think this is just like a one-dimensional vector, right? It's just a number, a two-dimensional, uh, an element of C2 it's actually like a four-dimensional thing, but it has like components where u1 and u2 are now complex numbers, okay? And if this is like our dot product in C, or inner product or whatever, what, how, I, how do you think we should define the dot product between two vectors with complex entries? Or this in the wrong order. Let's do row times column. So should you make the second one be the conjugate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the conjugate transpose. So what you're you're gonna end up so if like this is the this is like the permission adjoint or what what they usually call so like U1 bar v1 plus u2 bar v2. Okay, so the putting the t there. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so I would have to, so it would be like, so, so that transpose doesn't just transpose, it also conjugates. Yeah. So this is a natural generalization of the dot product, like what's going on in, in, the, in the complex plane. Okay, here's where something cool happens. Let's expand, and I can't think of good variables. Because now it's gonna be, what, eight letters? Maybe I do like, Let's do, okay, well, but then, that, then conjugate transposing it gives us that, right? Let's multiply these out. Good so far? AX. plus I A Y minus I B X plus B Y, right? Then C Z uh, plus I W C minus I D Z plus D W of Arthur. I do that right? Good, good one. Good yeah, that, thanks. That's <laughs> regular Rodney Dangerfield up here. Okay, so let's organize terms. Oh, I see that. So the you hey, do the I it, you're gonna spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so AX plus BY 
plus C Z plus D W. Okay. Plus I A Y minus B X plus I W C Okay. Now, do you notice a pat? Do you, okay. Does anyone notice? See, see something that's going on here? It's a dot product. This part's a dot product of real components. A X plus C Z plus B Y plus D W. And then what's going on here? So the dot product is of the real part. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm trying to make sure that I actually did this for it. No, wait. Yeah, check, yeah, check, my, check my algebra, maybe. I, I think. So AX, BY, I squared times, yeah. Minus IBX plus IOI. Yeah, that's all right. What's supposed to happen is like in the, the, so the so the product of like any com two complex numbers is like an inner product plus i times a skew symmetric product. Mm 